Hello, my name is Gilbert Simoni. I'm a board certified gastroenterologist in Southern California and founder of Advanced Gastroenterology Inc. In this video, I'm going to inform you about one of the common procedures in gastroenterology called EGD, which stands for esophago gastro duodenoscopy or simply upper GI endoscopy. The term endoscopy refers to a special technique for looking inside a body part. Upper GI is the portion of the gastrointestinal tract that includes the esophagus, the stomach, and the duodenum, which is the beginning of the small intestine. What is the purpose of EGD? EGD is a safe and effective way to evaluate problems such as anemia or blood loss, abdominal pain or discomfort, difficulty swallowing, heartburn, cough, diarrhea, or abnormalities such as hydrohernia, ulcers, Barrett's esophagus, H. pylori infection, celiac disease, or other abnormalities that may have first been detected by other tests. EGD can also identify and treat active bleeding from the stomach. I also use the EGD device to help me perform a TIF procedure for a reflux. How is EGD performed? EGD is generally done under sedation in an endoscopy center or at the hospital. It lasts approximately 5 to 10 minutes. During EGD, if I see something that may be abnormal, I can perform a biopsy or removal of a small amount of tissue for analysis. In many cases, EGD allows accurate diagnosis and treatment without the need for a major operation. After the procedure, you may have mild cramping and you will need to have a ride home as you will not be able to drive. Here are instructions to prepare you for an EGD. Hello, how are you? Hi, good, thanks. Okay, so Dr. Simone wants you to have an upper endoscopy or EGD, okay? Five days prior to your upper endoscopy, you're gonna stop any aspirin products, blood thinners, okay? That includes any ibuprofen, Aleve, etc., and Advil. That includes any multivitamins with iron or fish oil. But Tylenol is okay if you need it for pain, okay? Also, if you do smoke, you're gonna stop that five days prior as well, okay? Um, the day before your procedure, you're just gonna go about your normal day um, continue with your meals, normal meals, but it's nothing to eat or drink after midnight, okay? Also, um, if you do have any necessary medications to take in the morning, like blood pressure medications or diabetes medication, it is okay to take, but um, with a little sip of water, okay? If you have any questions, please call our office at 805-719-0244 or any additional information can be found on our website, www.agimedical.com. Okay, and the doctor will be right in to answer any of your questions. Hi. Hi. How's it going? Good. So I heard that you need, you had some questions to ask me? Yes, I do. All right, excellent. What is an EGD? EGD, it's a procedure during which I use a thin, flexible scope. We pass it through the mouth and we look at the lining of the esophagus, the stomach, and the first part of the small intestine. All right, it'll help me diagnose lots of different conditions and formulate some kind of treatment for them. What happens when I arrive at the endoscopy unit? Very good question. Once you arrive at the endoscopy center or the hospital, those are the two places we usually do the endoscopy at, uh, the nursing staff will take you in. They will check your vitals. They will check your blood pressure, your heart rate, temperature, oxygen saturation, and then they will put an IV uh, catheter uh, through your arm. And through the IV catheter, we can give you anesthetic or sedatives, okay? The procedure itself, take somewhere between five to 10 minutes, all right? The safest way to do the procedure is actually uh, when we use an anesthesiologist to give you anesthetic, but that depends on your insurance plan. Some insurance plans don't cover that, so you may wanna check with your insurance, and um, you can make arrangements. If they don't pay for an anesthesiologist, you can talk to the anesthesiologist or the anesthesia group pre uh, beforehand and make those arrangements, all right? Mm -hmm. If you wanna learn a little bit more about this and find out what your options are, you can actually go on to a website called www 
sedationfacts.org. Your other alternative in that case would be for me to give you some sedatives which make you relax and sleepy so that we can do the procedure. All right. What can be done during my procedure and what are the benefits? Well, uh, the endoscope can actually allow me to perform many different life-saving procedures and techniques to enhance your quality of life. All right. Um, I do the endoscopy for several different reasons. All right. Uh, the most common reason why we do the endoscopy is because of gastroesophageal reflux or epigastric discomfort. We can see precancerous conditions such as Barrett's esophagus or anatomical changes like a hiatal hernia. Other things that we look for are changes in the stomach, uh, such as ulcers or signs of bleeding. If I find those things, I can do biopsies and I can stop the bleeding by cauterizing the ulcer. There is one thing that can actually uh, cause ulcers and cancer in the stomach, it's called H. pylori. Even if the stomach lining looks normal, we generally do some biopsies to make sure you don't have that bacteria. We also look in the small intestine to look for, again, ulcers or some other precancerous conditions such as celiac disease, which also may not show visibly under the endoscopy, but once we do biopsies and look under the microscope, can tell us whether somebody has celiac, which is a sensitivity towards gluten. All right, all of these procedures uh, can help with diagnose and treat your symptoms and prevent cancer later on in life. What happens after the procedure? What are some of the risks? Well, after the procedure is done, we bring you out to the recovery area, either from uh, in the hospital or the endoscopy center, where we monitor you and make sure you uh, wake up and you, you don't have any discomfort. You may have a little bit of abdominal cramping or discomfort, which generally goes away after you belch or pass gas, all right? You may have a little bit of irritation at the side of the IV or a sore throat. Those also are temporary and go away within 24 hours. Uh, things to notice after you go home um, is if you throw up any blood, if you have any tarry black stools, uh, if you have dizziness, lightheadedness, chest pain, any of those symptoms, you have to call me right away or you need to go to the emergency room and have the emergency room doctor call me right away. All right? There are some risks uh, of doing endoscopy. As I mentioned, the most common ones are the cramping or bleeding, but there are some other serious complications that can happen. They're very rare. The uh, uh, chance of having serious problems later on and not doing the endoscopy uh, is far more common than having any of those complications uh, that are listed in your uh, consent form. And you can read that and review it, take it home with you, all right? And it's, it lists all the textbook complications that could possibly happen, all right? Uh, once you get home, you should relax, have some liquids, and uh, uh, you should feel fine within 24 hours. Also, what we recommend is not to drive because you're still gonna have some effect of the sedation afterwards. That's why we have somebody drive you home, all right? Um, if you have any other questions or you come up with any questions or concerns that we haven't answered or uh, something that you haven't thought about, I will see you before the procedure and you can ask me any questions you would have at that time also. All right, to answer all your questions, Think so. Why you come out? We'll get you all set up. All right. All right.